Hi, I'm Dr. Mahboob, MD Ophthalmology from Ames, New Delhi. And uh, today I'm going to discuss about the very important topics for obviously ophthalmologic point of view also and important for the examination point of view. A lot of times they have asked you questions over this topic and this topic needs to be clarified from its bottom. So let's dwell into the topic and try to know why it is actually occurring okay this is the codes disease okay now the codes disease is an idiopathic idiopathic retinal telangiectasia and intraretinal subretinal exudation without appreciable sign of vitreoretinal traction meaning by before previously when the coats disease was first diagnosed it was diagnosed in a patient with enucleated eye where there is obviously everything has gone there was massive exudation okay so it was from that time, it was from that time, this Coates disease is our, was actually being related to the exudations only. But remember, the exudation is not at all the criteria to diagnose the Coates disease. It is a complication or in the Coates disease, obviously, yeah, it's true that exudation occurs in the Coates disease, but presence of exudation or absence of exudation does not exclude the diagnosis of Coates disease. So, we have devised, we have arrived to a definition that it's an intraretinal telangiectasia, a small retinal arterial dilatation, a small retinal vessel dilatations, right? So this is the telangiectasia with intraretinal or the subretinal exudations, but the traction is not there. The traction, the traction is not there. Okay, what happened? Mainly in the male mainly in the male and it is usually unilateral in contrast to the retinoblastoma which is in the bilateral retinoblastoma occurs in around three years of age okay but this occurs around eight years of age first decades of life obviously so there is a so much of confusion that the retinoblastoma because the presentation sometimes similar to the retinoblastoma so you have to differentiate the most important differential diagnosis of course disease is retinoblastoma only and since it is unilateral, it is bilateral, can be unilateral, but mostly bilateral. Male, more pre preponderance to male, but here male and female are barabar, equal. Not clearly inherited. This is the nuts and hypothesis you have remembered, you know that retroblastoma gene is there, most of them are inherited. Obviously, there are much to most of the genes are associated with this. But here in this course disease, most of the genes are not associated. But sometimes NDP genes, that is the nori disease protein gene. Okay, that is the nori disease associated. Nori disease bhi isse associated hota hai. So can be said that it's a, a, a sometimes can be considered as a subvariant of the nori disease. The second thing is that Lieber's miliary aneurysm. Kabi kabi, this was previously diagnosed as a distinct entity, but now as considered to be a milder form of the same disease. If you diagnose a case of Lieber's miliary um, aneurysm, then we say that the patient will ultimately go into the Coates disease only. And it is considered to be the milder variant of the Coates disease. Okay. Now, coming to the symptoms and the signs, whenever the Coates disease is actually occurring. So, the telangiectatic vessels can be in the center posterior pole, can be in the periphery. Okay. Now, what are the symptoms that the patient presents with? The first symptoms that the patient presents with is the visual equity visual acuity then there can be leukocoria that is white pupillary reflex and you have to differential diagnose you have the lots of differential diagnosis of leukocoria 
then when there is a visually deprived eye suppose this eye is visually deprived obviously this becomes non dominant eye and this eye becomes dominant eye so the non dominant eye the affected eye will deviate toward deviate and they can cause the strabismus but in some cases nothing will happen why why nothing will happen because of the presence of the telangiectetic vessel in very periphery no exudation takes place remains there as it is no symptoms takes place only incidental finding so these are the signs uh, sorry symptoms what are the signs then obviously i have told you about ret retinal telangiectasia in the definition only then i have told you about the interretinal and the subretinal exudation in the definition only what happened because of the uh, because of this telangiectetic vessels obviously the vessel will be released and they can lead to the new vascularization of iris this is very important to understand can lead to the new vascular glaucoma in a very advanced cases and obviously there is the exudation so it can cause what type of detachment exudative retinal detachment see retinal detachment rd can be of three types most important is rheumatogenous okay rheumatogenous rd second is the tractional rd and third one is the exudation rd exudative rd so exudative rd will takes place only in those conditions when there is a infection when there is a inflammation okay so here there is a inflammation exudation so there the retinal detachment which will takes place here will be exudative only got it see these are the things that i must tell you about can you see the first picture just see the first picture here the line will show the why leukocoria pupillary reflex see the pupillary reflex of the child now can you see here here in this area it is not well prominent but you can see the some dot like vessels this is telangiectasia and in the vessels here you can see the aneurysm here also aneurysm okay now what is happening here there is a exudation which is uh, masking the blood vessels can you see this white white exudation which is masking the blood vessel blood vessels what happen what happen in the exudations when there is a also the healing process there is a gliotic seeding of the retinal vessels see the silvery lining here can you see can you see the silvery lining here here so these are the gliotic seeding only this is also a part of the coats disease right now when you do this ffa what happens in the ffa you can see obviously very easily the dilated vessels aneurysmal dilatations and the telangiectasia here the dilated vessels and the telangiectasia here this is the early phase in the late phase the whole of the uh, i mean this is what this is the hyperfluorescent area why because of the hemorrhage corresponding to this hemorrhage part okay and these are the blocked fluorescence area so this is basically a picture a typical picture of the coats disease and this uh, this has been quoted from the kanske book a very authentic book very authentic picture now the latest followed classification that is the sealed classification there are so many classification that they have give sieves classification okay then the last one that is very important to remember that is a sealed classification however it is not uh, so much important for uh, the your label but if you want to learn you can learn stage 1 retinal telangiectasia only stage 2 with exudation extra phobial exudation or phobial exudation a and b exudative retinal detachment can be subtotal or total subtotal may extra phobial or phobial 
and the four is the total retinal detriment with glaucoma and uh, the last is advanced in this stage disease okay the next slide is on the differential diagnosis of the Coats disease, Ligocoria have you seen? So the most important differential diagnosis is retinoblastoma. You can easily identify the toxocara, differentiate it. You can easily identify it from the retinopathy of prematurity, from the pars planitis, planitis. FEBR means phobial exudative vitroretinal vitroretinopathy or Eels disease, not discourse disease, and nodes disease. Why? Because NDP related retinopathy, na? NDP related retinopathy. Coming to the important thing that I have to discuss that the differentiation between Coats disease and retinoblastoma just see the important point to understand that the coats disease is unilateral and in a male but the retinoblastoma is mostly bilateral and can occur in equal amount in male and female second point age is very important around in the first decade but around eight years here less than three years of age very important to understand Calcification. Calcification is not at all takes place in the coats disease. Retinoblastoma may calcification hota and you identify the calcification by USG ultrasonography. If at all net not finding, you can go for the CT scan if you want, but no need extra money, no need to spend. Vitreous seeding absent means the, the 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 localized lesion does not uh, gives a small small lesion into the vitreous which can seed into the other part which can settle down into the, in the other part of the retina and create the disease unlikely uh, in the retinoblastoma the retinoblastoma if see, is, see if this is a lesion suppose uh, in the right eye if there is a lesion here okay if there is a retinoblastoma lesion here, then it can cause, it can give a small lesion into the vitreous. It can seed a small lesion into the vitreous and this small lesion can come here, can come here and then create a disease here, create a disease here. It can also go anteriorly. So this is what I mean to say about the vitreous seeding, which is present in retinoblastoma, not in the coat stitches. Got it? Coming to the important point that if after you have diagnosed the coats disease very good you have diagnosed the coats disease now what you need to do is to manage the first thing that to be managed here is observation if suppose there is a no threat to the vision only till injectetic vessels you see but no exudations near the phobia nothing at all then you are obviously in stage one better we can say no threat to the vision just observe if there is a telangiectetic vessels with exudations and no srf srf means subretinal fluid no subretinal fluid then what is important obviously you are going to do laser because with this in if there is a subretinal fluid the laser will not be much more effective if there is an exudation with srf you are going to do cryotherapy and if at all there is a retinal detachment obviously you have to go for this go for the surgery when there is a peri advanced eye disease stage 5 remember the, the seal remember the seals classification stage 5 painful blind eye you are going to treat by the enucleation and obviously obviously if there is a uh, chances of nvi is high risk obviously you are going to give anti -vagab. this is about <coughs> all about the coats disease all you need to know the differentiating point from the retinoblastoma and the photo that i have shown you to revise that that's it so thank you guys for watching this
and do watch all the lessons that's quite interesting thank you obvious and uh,